everyone and welcome to my channel babbling books this is my first ever book haul video i don't usually buy enough books um to make a video about um or not enough books at one time but i went a little crazy <laughs> over the past few weeks and i have about oh, 40 or 50 books that i'm going to talk about um, I'm going to start with a few poetry collections, move on to fiction, which is um, some adult fiction, some graphic novels, some younger children's fiction, and some middle grade to YA. And then I'm going to talk about all the nonfiction books uh, towards the end of the video, and I'm going to make it as fast as I can because there's so many to talk about. So for poetry, I have the Forward Book of Poetry from 2020 as well as the Forward Book of Poetry from 2021. So these were, actually all of these poetry collections were recommended by Jen Campbell. I'll link her channel down below. Uh, please check out her channel. She is, she gives some absolutely fantastic recommendations. So these Forward Book of Poetry, what is such a good idea about these is they are um, <clears throat> full of different authors as well as different types of poetry. So if you're new to poetry like I am, you can try all different types of poems and see what you like and find maybe a particular poet that you really, really enjoy and go, you know, get their collection. Um, I have never really enjoyed poetry, so I'm hoping um, that that's something that I can, I can get into. And then we have Loose Woman by Sandra Cisneros. This is another book recommended by Jen Campbell. So this author, she's the author of a short story collection called The House on Mango Street. I absolutely loved it. So I think I'm going to enjoy that poetry collection as well. And then we have What We Buried um, by Caitlin Shield. So this book is about, um, I think, Young Love, but let me read what the author says. I wrote most of the poems in this book when I was 18 years old and in love with a boy, but couldn't say it. I remember the way I'd hold my thumb over his name in my phone. I remember how I made him more important than taking care of myself. These are the stories I screamed just to get through the day. The second edition is for the girl I was back then. This is for finally letting him go and surviving it. So I actually think I'm going to enjoy this and it, it's a really small collection, um, but it sounds very interesting. So, fiction. Um, first, we have Indelicacy by Amina Kane. Um, I cannot remember the name of the booktuber who recommended this. I'm going to link her channel down below. I've only ever watched a few of her videos, and I'm a new subscriber, so I cannot remember what the name of her channel is. But this is about a woman who is a cleaner at a museum, and she wants to be a writer. And she starts to write about these works of art that she sees in the museum. And you don't necessarily know which work of art she is writing about. You sort of have to clue it together, I believe. And I think there may be some magical realism in here as well. Um, but it sounded fascinating. So I'm really looking forward to that. And for my daughter, we have the Boxcar Children. This is a pretty well-known um, children's book series. But um, my daughter's teacher is reading this at school and she's really enjoying it. So we thought we would get her a few of those and see if she would like to read them at home as well. Uh, and then we have The Bass Rock by Evie Wild. So this is a story of three women um, across uh, multiple centuries. And it takes place in Scotland. And so you have Sarah, accused of being a witch, is fleeing for her life. Ruth, in the aftermath of the Second World War, is navigating a new marriage. And six decades later, Viv, still mourning the death of her father, is cataloging Ruth's belongings in the now empty house. So that sounded really interesting. I like books that stretch across uh, multiple um, periods of time and then have some sort of connection. And for my son, I bought uh, The Boy Who Dared. Susan Campbell Bartoletti is the author. And this is a novel based on the true story of a Hitler youth. Um, my son really enjoys World War II fiction and nonfiction. 
So we got that for him. And then we have Iron Widow. It is, I love this cover. It is so bright and beautiful. Um, the author is, uh, I think that's Zyran, J. Zhao, I think is how you say that. Um, I'm not even going to attempt to explain this because it seems a little complicated. Okay, so it says, in Huxia, the highest honor for a young girl is to be selected as a concubine pilot. Supporters paired up with male pilots to power up chrysalises, the giant transforming mechas that humanity relies on to battle the massive aliens that lurk beyond the Great Wall. Sounds absolutely fascinating. The, the premise, the world building, all of it sounds great. And I went out on a limb and got Anne of Green Gables, a graphic novel for my daughter. I love, um, I loved Anne of Green Gables um, as a, a young girl. And my daughter loves graphic novels. So I'm hoping that this will resonate with her. But if it doesn't, I still intend to read it. Um, and here is a sample of some of the artwork. I really love the way the author drew Anne, um, as well as her aunt. So, I'm really looking forward to reading that. I loved Anne of Green Gables. And for my son, we have Halo Battle Born. So, my son loves video games. He loves action and adventure, science fiction, fantasy, all of those things. So, this seems right up his alley. So, this is more of um, like a sci-fi action novel. Um, so, I think he'll enjoy that. And then we have The Rig by Joe Ducci. It is really hard to see the cover. So, um, it's a maximum security juvenile prison in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And they're trying to escape from it. So, probably dystopian. But I think he'll enjoy that. And then we have The Magic Treehouse graphic novel by Mary Pope Osborne. This one is called Mummies in the Morning. And it's just a sort of a young child's action and adventure graphic novel. Um, it's very dark um, because they're in a pyramid. But I think my daughter will really enjoy that. Another graphic novel for my daughter is City of Dragons, The Awakening Storm by Jamal Yogis and Vivian Trong. So this is about a girl who is on a field trip when she is given a dragon egg to care for. So some magic and maybe some mysticism, probably some action. And my daughter's all-time favorite book series, Creepover by PJ Knight. So this is actually book one. Um, book three is actually the book that I most recently purchased for her, but she took it to school. So I don't have it. So we're just going to use this one. So um, this is a graphic novel for sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, around thereabouts. And they're horror stories, but they're very modern. So you have a lot of um, texting and I aming and doing research on the computer and instant messaging each other and all kinds of different, you know, more modern things but they all revolve around some sort of a horror story. This one in particular is called Truth or Dare, and it is about a ghost um, that these girls um, sort of, I guess, encounter or learn about on um, at a sleepover. And then we have <laughs> The Meg by Stephen Alton. I love books that take place in extreme environments, whether it's deep under the ocean or at Antarctica or the Amazon. Um, something like that. So this is right up my alley. On top of that, I love books or movies that have to do with sharks. I actually saw the movie The Meg um, with Jason Statham a couple of weeks ago and I really enjoyed it. So I wanted to get the book once I found out it was based on a book. Um, I started reading this and I like the movie better. But more on that when I do my wrap up. And then we have Marigold and Rose of Fiction um, by Louise Gluck. And this is a winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature. It's a very small little book. And this was recommended on Ink and Paper blog by Russell. And it sounded very interesting and unique. 
Um, I'll link his channel down below. He's another booktuber that I absolutely love. Um, but I'm really interested in reading that because it, it seems unique. I'm sorry I have to keep leaning out of the, the camera shot because I have books spread all out in front of me and I'm having to reach for them. And this is, yes, this is the last fiction book. Um, and it is Matterhorn by Carl Marlantis. So this is a huge book. Um, when you Google recommended reading for the Vietnam War, this one comes up frequently. So I decided to go ahead and just bite the bullet and get it. Um, and I mean, it's about a 21 year old uh, second lieutenant and the Vietnam War um, on a 13 month tour in Vietnam. So that's right up my alley. I like reading about that kind of stuff. Okay, so now to the nonfiction. To start with, we have Princess, a true story of life behind the veil in Saudi Arabia by Jean Sasson. So this is, um, I guess, the biography of a Saudi Arabian princess. I will say, after I purchased this book, it came to my attention that a lot of people have claimed that this has been sensationalized and that it is not as nonfiction as you would think. I'm going to go ahead and read it um, and maybe afterwards do some additional research, but there's that. And then we have The Impossible State, North Korea Past and Future by Victor Cha. So this is a book about North Korea and the Kim Dynasty, um, the history and rise of the Kim Dynasty, um, the author illuminates the repressive regime's complex economy and culture, um, its human rights abuses, its belligerent relationship with the United States, and analyzes the regime's major security issues. So just a very general, across-the-board book about um, North Korea. And then we have In Harm's Way um, by Doug Stanton. Uh, I have read books by Doug Stanton before and enjoyed them. This is the sinking of the USS Indianapolis and the extraordinary story of its survivors. So if you've ever seen Jaws, the captain of the boat that the um, sheriff goes out on um, with the scientists, I cannot remember any of their names. Um, the captain of the boat, his character is a survivor of the sinking of the USS Indianapolis. So the USS Indianapolis was the ship that was on a covert, incredibly secret mission that delivered the bomb that was eventually dropped on Hiroshima um, or Hiroshima. And when it was sunk by the Japanese, when the USS Indianapolis was sunk, the mission was so secret that there was like almost no help, hope of rescue. So the survivors were stranded in the ocean and they were being picked off like one by one by sharks and I think they were in the ocean for a few days um so it's like a true horror story so I'm I've been interested in that story ever since I saw Jaws when I was a kid and I never even attempted to learn anything about it so when I came across that book I snatched it up and then we have Band of Brothers by Stephen E. Ambrose. So this is a really popular book. Um, when I was in high school, they HBO put out a mini series based off of this book called Band of Brothers. It was super popular. Every coach and male teacher at my school um, was talking about it and asking, you know, have you been watching it and recommending it? And I have never seen the show and I've never read the book and I think it's about time. Oh, you know what? A fiction book got lost in the nonfiction stack. So we have The Yard. Um, this is a fiction book. Um, it takes place in Victorian England, and it is about um, the murder squad. There are 12 detectives, and one of their own is murdered, and they enlist the help of Dr. Bernard Kingsley, who is The Yard's first forensic pathologist. So that sounds fascinating. Back to nonfiction. We have Behind Every Great Man, The Forgotten Women Behind the World's Famous and Infamous. This is written by Marlene Wagman-Geller. And you have 
Mrs. Oscar Wilde, Mrs. Jerry Garcia, Mrs. Alfred Hitchcock, Mrs. Salvador Dali, Mrs. Nelson Mandela. You get the idea. So I'm really looking forward to that. And that is Behind Every Great Man by Marlene Wagman Geller. And then we have Ruby Tandow um, is the author of Eat Up. This is a nonfiction book about food, appetite, and eating what you want. So this was recommended by Lauren from Lauren and the Books. I have to picture her saying, hello, welcome to Lauren and Lauren and the Books, or however she says it, but I have to like go through that process to remember her name. Um, so this is just a sort of like an ode to food and body image and it talks about like certain meals and home cooking and emotional eating and you are what you eat question mark and bad taste and digestion um, and just all kinds of different topics that have to do with food um, and the culture around food and what food means to people. Um, so it just sounded really interesting. I like to cook and I like to eat. So that sounded right up my alley. Oh, and I'll make sure that I, um, put the link to Lauren from Lauren in the books down below. I recommend her too. I love her. She's like a cozy cup of tea, um, watching her videos. So we have Love in a Headscarf, Muslim Woman Seeks the One by Shalina Zahara Jan Mohammed. So this is a memoir about a um, Muslim woman who is of Asian descent, who lives in London. And she has decided that she's going to go the traditional path, I guess, of an arranged marriage route, route to finding her future husband. Absolutely fascinating. I read this, I finished it. Um, I will talk about it in more detail in my wrap up video. And then we have, oh, and I want to say um, Love in a Headscarf. I want to say this was recommended by Jen Campbell, who I have linked down below. I think that's who it was. I'm pretty sure. So we have A World Undone, the story of the Great War from 1914 to 1918. This is so heavy, this book. Um, I'm currently reading this, and I'm just going to say that it is exactly what it says it is. It is the history of World War I, um, and it covers what led up to World War I, the years of the war, and then it also looks like there will be um, some follow-up at the war's conclusion. Yeah. So more detail about that in my wrap-up as well. Oh, sorry, I'm having to lean out of the thing to get the books. So we have Token Black Girl, a memoir by Danielle Prescott. So um, this says, Danielle Prescott grew up black in an elite and overwhelmingly white community. Her identity made more invisible by the whitewashed movies, television, magazines, and books she and her classmates voraciously consumed. So I'm very interested in reading that. And then we have a cookbook, um, Vegetarian Dinners in the Oven. Um, I think Lauren from Lauren in the Books recommended this one, or she recommended another one. And this is the one I ended up selecting. I can't remember, but her channel will be linked down below. Um, she is a, I think she's a, she is a vegan. Um, she went from pescatarian to vegetarianism to being a vegan, I think. So she has a lot of cookbooks um, on her channel compared to a lot of other channels. Anyway, um, so I did skim through this and I tabbed things um, for our family and there's a lot of images in it. Um, and that is Vegetarian Dinners in the Oven by Rukmini Ayer. Um, and this is vegetarian and vegan. And then we have by Honor Bound, um, Two Navy Seals, The Medal of Honor, and A Story of Extraordinary Courage. I enjoy reading military, oh, did I say who this was by? I didn't. Uh, Tom Norris and Mike Thornton with Dick Couch. 
Um, so military memoir and with the addition of it also being the story of Medal of Honor winners. The Hidden People. Try to get the glare off. This is a library discard that I bought used. The Hidden People of North Korea by Ralph Hazig and Kong Dan Oh. And I'm not sure if, if this is... Okay, yeah, this is just a story, uh, I mean, a book about um, life in North Korea. It does not specifically follow um, a specific number of people. It's a more general. And then we have Under the Loving Care of the Fatherly Leader, North Korea and the Kim Dynasty by Bradley K. Martin. This is a huge book, and the print is pretty small. Um... I'm going to have to be in the right headspace <laughs> to read this because it, it looks like a lot. Um, but this is the story of the self-imposed isolation and the Orwellian leaders um, and going into taking readers inside a society that might seem to be from another planet. So just a study of um, North Korea, its people, its policies, its leaders, things like that. And then we have the new... American Militarism, How Americans Are Seduced by War by Andrew J. Bakovic. So I read a book last month by this author. I really enjoyed it. I think he's a great nonfiction writer. Um, he seems to take great care in being as unbiased as possible. Um, but this is about a dangerous dual obsession has taken hold of Americans, conservative and liberals alike, for the past several decades, we have seen a dark marriage of militarism and utopian ideology of unprecedented military might wed to a blind faith in the universality of American values. So that seems like a really um, important book to read. And we have 150 Healthiest Foods on Earth by Johnny Bowden, PhD, and CNS. So he also wrote The Great Cholesterol Myth, which I plan on purchasing pretty soon. So this is just a collection of different types of food that are the most nutritionally dense um, to meet your body's needs. The author goes into great detail about the different foods that he talks about. And it is not just vegetables and fruit and grains. There is um, dairy, meat, and oils, um, herbs, mm, things like that. So this is a really great book if you are trying to make sure that you are getting all of the nutrients and, and that your body needs. Oh, it's way over there. Okay, so now we have another library discard. Inside the Victorian Home by Judith Flanders. It is really hard to see this cover. There you go. <laughs> Okay, so um, this is about domestic life in Victorian England, and it's broken up into rooms. So you have like the drawing room, I'm trying to see if I can, the dining room, um, and there are some images, and I just think it's probably, oh look, and it says morning clothes for women, and it tells you how long to wear them, and what um, the correct clothing would be. Um, and there's some advertisement. So it's just a great little snapshot of what life must have been like in Victorian England, which is something I love. And then we have another book by Andrew Bokovic, um, After the Apocalypse, America's Ro Role in the World Transformed. The purpose of U.S. foreign policy has been, at least theoretically, to keep Americans safe. Yet, as we confront a radically changed world, it has become indisputably clear that the terms of that policy have failed. Washington's insistence that a market economy is compatible with the common good, its faith in the idea of the West and its special relationships, that's in quotations, its conviction that global military primacy is the key to a stable and, su and sustainable world order, these have brought endless wars and a succession of moral and material disasters. So another book that seems important to read. 
And then we have the Vietnam Reader. Um, this is actually a mixture of fiction and nonfiction. Um, it's ed edited by Stuart O'Nan. And it's a collection of different types of, I'm going to say literature regarding the Vietnam War. But it also seems like it, it talks about filmography um, as well as... Um, Um, journalistic articles and essays and uh, short stories and things like that. It's just like an accumulative book of things relating to the Vietnam War. Um, that was highly recommended from multiple places um, for reading regarding the Vietnam War. And then we have Gemma Hartley's Fed Up, Emotional Labor, Women, and the Way Forward. So this is about how women... A lot of women shoulder the emotional and unseen burdens of their life, their life with their partner, their in their partnerships, um, in their families, in their household, and things like that. So I think this is going to be a very interesting read, and hopefully, maybe some eye-opening things in it as well. And we are down to the last three books. So we have Nuremberg. Evil on Trial, The Extraordinary Story of How the Nazis Were Brought to Justice by James Owen. Um, this is just part of um, some future reading that I would like to do regarding World War II. Nothing to Envy, Ordinary Lives in North Korea by Barbara Dimmick. Um, and this is a national award winning book, or excuse me, finalist. And this follows the lives of six North Korean citizens over a 15-year time period. So that seems like that's fascinating. And the last book is Black Wave, um, Saudi Arabia, Iran, and the 40-year rivalry that unraveled cultural, religion, and collective memory in the Middle East by Kim Gaddis. Um, so... I try to, when I'm reading books about other countries, to have an author that is from that country or at least the general region. But sometimes um, the majority of the books that you hear about are written by a person from the West, which this is. But it was on like the top three recommended reading list um, for if you're interested in um, Middle Eastern politics. So I went ahead and got it. And that is it. So we managed to get through all of those books and not too long a time, I hope. Um, please let me know if you've read any of these, what you thought of them. I'm always interested in recommendations. So if you have anything... Um, that, you know, sort of fit some of the things I was talking about or some of the books I have here, please feel free to comment down below. Um, and I'll be back in a few weeks to do my wrap up. Bye.